Hello everyone, my name is Melissa and welcome to my channel that's all about cross stitch, quilting, and taking time to be creative. If you are a returning subscriber, thanks for coming back and spending some time with me today. And if this is your first time joining me, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. Today I have some whips to show you. I have a finish. I have um, a little bit of haul. Actually, I thought I'd shared everything um, on my last video, but um, I found a little bit more as I was uh, putting some things together for a little DIY retreat that I'm having this weekend. And then I have a couple of mini quilts from Patterns by Camille Ross Kelly that I'd like to show you. And maybe a couple other little things sprinkled in. So sit back and relax and hopefully you're stitching or quilting and taking some time to be creative yourself. So I'd like to show you, first of all, um, a finish that I have. It's called Jolly and it's by Hands On Design. It was a kit that I purchased during the Jingle Ball in December last year. So it came with the fabric, it came with um, the little ribbon and pom-pom, a little piece of orange felt for the snowman's nose. So um, I have a finish and it has a lot of the things that I'll need to fully finish it eventually. So this is stitched on 28 count blue jeans gingham and um, I really I really love this gingham print I think it adds a little dimension um, a little something different that I haven't stitched on before it was a pretty quick stitch and you can see the felt right here I kind of did some crisscross stitches on it to secure it down and that's the piece of felt that came with it. <laughs> so, anyway, this will be turned into an ornament. And you can see the shape of the, the original pattern is kind of rounded along the top and straight on the bottom. And I'm thinking about either doing it as maybe an oval or um, maybe even a rectangle. So I'm not sure the shape that I'll do yet. Time will tell. Um, I used DMC thread and let's see. I don't know if there's anything else I need to tell you. Oh, there is. So the fabric is kind of loosely woven, I feel like. And typically I stitch in hand. Every once in a while I'll pull out a hoop. Um, with this one, it felt I don't know, a little loose. And so I went to see if I had a small, um, a small hoop to use. And this is the one that I found. It was one that had been in some my mother-in-law's things. And I thought, oh, well, that'll work. And I used it and it worked great. It was a little, it was a little fussy to kind of get it over the metal. The way it works, if you have never seen one like this, is you kind of give this a squeeze here and you can drape your fabric over this and kind of drop and give it a squeeze and and you know drop the top in and it expands and it secures your fabric against the plastic piece well it was a little fussy to get just right in there so that i felt like it was the grain was straight the weave, warp and weave and then when I went to press it to get ready um, to film today, it, the creases that it left, I almost felt like it discolored, it discolored the fabric a little bit from the pressure. But now that it's now that it's pressed, I don't see I don't see the discoloration. But it actually I pressed on the back side, and I had to use some moisture to get it to flatten out and I used a little bit of spray starch on the back and I don't know if that's a no-no or not but um, that's what I had handy a lot of times I'll use a little squirt of best press or water to um, you know give it a little a little steam I guess but um, 
yeah, that's, it was hard to get the creases out of it. So I guess that comes with using a hoop. I, I imagine if you use a, I have never used a Q-snap, but I imagine if you use a Q-snap that there would be some kinds of lines from the pressure. Um, I'm not sure, but anyway, they did, it looks like, come out, but I was a little, ner I was a little nervous about it. So I'll tuck this in my little drawer here. And the next thing that I've worked on in the last few weeks is um, Stronger Together. Um, it's a pattern by Fat Quarter Shop. And it's a fundraiser um, that they have for, um, oh gosh, I can't even think of what it's called now. Um, I forget every time, but I'll put the information in the bottom. Um, I want to say it's the like United Negro College Foundation, the UNCF. Okay, I think that's what it is. Um, this was the fundraiser from last, no, two years ago. And I'm working on this so that I could work on the one from this year because it is just gorgeous too. I like the um, really neat modern design and I wonder, do I have... I don't know if I have the pattern close by, but what I have left to do, I, I worked a little bit on the kind of gingham in here, and of course I started here. I might have worked on this a little bit, but this weekend I'm going to try and, I think I can finish it up. I thought maybe I'd save it. I have one more trip to take um, next weekend, another college visit for my daughter. And I thought maybe I would take it, but you know, I didn't really get much stitching time um, last weekend when we went to visit a college in um, Arizona. We went to Flagstaff to visit Northern Arizona University, and I, di I didn't really get much stitching time in. So I had thought about saving this because it's really easy to see and, and work on, but I don't know, I feel like I'm so close. I just have to finish this triangle here and then this white stitching. I have another section just like that to do here. And then a few little stars along this area. I don't know, I feel like that would go pretty quick. So I'll at least work on it. I don't know if I'll finish it um, this weekend. So I mentioned that I'm going to do a little DIY retreat. Um, when I lived in Kansas City, we had, I, well, I was a member of the Kansas City Modern Quilt Guild, and they usually had a retreat, I don't know, once or twice a year. We had sew days. Um, I lived near Stitch On there in Lawrence, and they usually hosted a retreat or two a year, and I usually went to the one in, in the spring, I think in May. Um, and there were just, I would sometimes go on retreats with friends. So there were so many opportunities to go on retreats that were close by. And I haven't really been on one. Um, I'm trying to think if I have been on a quilting retreat since I moved here. And we're coming up on four years that I live, that I've lived here in New Mexico. I don't think I have. Um, and definitely not a cross stitch retreat retreat. I've never gone. Well, I take that back stitch on when they would host the retreats, you could quilt or cross stitch. And we had people that did both. Um, and some people that even did paper crafting. Um, so it was kind of just a creative time, but mostly quilting and cross stitch. So anyway, I, it, it's been like, you know, it's been forever and I've had a little, a couple little, um, weekends where I've taken some time for myself here at home when we had um, quilt con together um, you know during all the lockdowns and everything they switched quilt con to um, a virtual format which was really neat and I was able to do that at home and um, during the jingle ball I kind of spent the weekend I dedicated that weekend to you know stitching and and watching the presenters and just really soaking all of that up and my family is so awesome about encouraging me to do that kind of thing a couple I don't know I don't know maybe three or four weeks ago I said something to my husband that gosh 
you guys have been so busy. We've had a lot going on. I just feel like I could use, you know, a stretch of time just to relax and, you know, get some stitching done and not feeling like I'm having to, you know, trying to figure out these little snippets of time and just, just have some time away. And we both, uh, my husband and I kind of encourage each other to do that. And we take turns and we have a special time with our daughter while the other one is kind of retreating or taking time away. A lot of times he'll go on hikes or go on um, like a camping trip or, or something, backpacking. And um, so anyway, I haven't done that in a while. And we've got a big trip coming up this summer. And um, I've decided while I want to retreat, I'm going to try and make this low cost and um, as simple as possible and really get the maximum amount of like stitching and quilting um, and just, you know, relaxing time. So we have a camper and it's here on our property here on our house, um, close to our house. And so I'm just going to pack up some cross stitch projects and um, while my family's away, um, at school and work today, today's Friday, I gave myself a noon cutoff to be done with any chores. I got um, some soup in the crock pot for when they come home. Well, I'll have, you know, something to eat that's easy. But I'm going to quilt and sew and um, do that kind of thing today while they're gone here in this room. And then um, before they're home at 530, I'll pack up my cross stitch and any other little things that I want to work on and head to our camper and um, I'll have some, you know, some treats and snacks and um, my iPad so I can watch Floss Tube and maybe some movies and um, just retreat out there over the weekend. Um, back when my daughter was pretty young, I belonged to a Mothers of Preschoolers group and they encouraged us to take some time for ourselves um, every once in a while. And I remember we brainstormed different ways to do that. One mom, her, um, her family, her husband took her kids to a hotel at a destination to not too far away. They were so excited to go swim. They went to the zoo. They did some things like that while she stayed at home and worked on a project that she was really excited to work on. Um, we had some other friends that they um, switched. They watched each other's kids over the weekend while, um, you know, the wife and husband could get away for, you know, a weekend. And then they switched and the other one watched the kids while the other couple got away. Um, and then, you know, some people went away on a girl's trip. So there's all kinds of ways to do a retreat. It really just depends on what your goals are. And I really thought hard about what my goals were for this retreat. And really my main goals are to relax and have fun. I keep thinking about things that I can get done. What can I do that's productive? But I really want to rest and play and, um, and cross stitch is usually part of that. So, um, I'll report back on on how it goes, but it's it's been it's been a while. I feel like I'm a little little rusty at retreating, so this will be a fun way to have a little getaway for myself. Um, even though we're doing like a big family trip this um, this summer, so um, I wanted to show you. Last week I showed you one of the. Well, I'll wait for that. I'll I'll I'll, I'll get back to that. I wanted to show you um, a couple other things that I stitched on some more of my ribs. I have two more. So one is, um, let's see, I feel like, there we go. This is hands-on design and it's Let's Talk Spring. So I'm stitching this on a chalkboard black and using DMC. This is 14 count um, Ada. So the last time you saw this, I think I had most of this complete and maybe partially the umbrella. Um, I know I had this ampersand, so I think since I filmed last, I've added bulbs. I think I've added some of this blue here, a couple of the raindrops, and then the green. So I'm going to stitch on, on this some more this weekend. 
I love stitching on this one. The black can be a little tricky, but with my light and something, you know, light colored underneath, I'm finding that it's working out pretty well. So um, that's my progress on that one. And the next one I have is the Shine On Sampler. And it's been quite a while since I've stitched on this one. So let, let me show you. The last time you saw this from me, I had all of this complete and the X's across. And I had most of this star here. And since then, I've added this little pink point and this little row here. I think I did this yesterday. I hadn't stitched in a while, and I sat down and I was like, okay, I'm gonna get this row done. So I love these colors. Um, and this comes from the um, Bonnie and Camille quilt bee book. And the, there's a quilt that's the same design, and there's um, you know the pattern for all of the, the blocks in here. But then in the back, there's the cross-stitch sampler. So, so I'm hoping this weekend to work on this little piece right here. I think it'll go together pretty easily because it's, you know, just kind of straight blocky, quilt, uh, not quilting, stitching. <laughs> so this is um, being stitched on a Lugana. Get it upside down. I want to say, what did I choose? I think I followed the pattern pretty closely. It's a 25 count Lugana and it, it's, it's white. So I don't know how much more info to give than that. But it's, I will say when I first started stitching on it, it was a little tricky for me. I felt like the holes were kind of small, going from 14 count to 25 count. And um, I don't know. I felt like it was pretty tricky. But now that I'm used to stitching a little bit more on, um, I think, 32 count and some other 25 count projects, it's getting a, a little bit easier. If I've got good light, it goes it goes pretty well in my readers. So um, that was one of my WIPGO goals for, I'm going to reach over here and grab this. Um, so my whip go numbers that were called last, um, let's see, I guess it's right here, for April, that was number five and number seven. And for me, um, no, that's not right. For March was two and 22. And so um, my costume party by Hands On Design, I think I showed it to you last time. Um, I worked five hours on that. And then um, my other goal was um, Jolly, the pattern that I show you, showed you first. And that was to work five hours on that one, but I went ahead and finished it. So um, then the numbers called for April are five and 17. And for me, um, on my little chart. Let's see. So five is, let's see, what did I put here? Five is an ornament. And so I can pick any ornament to work on. And um, I've picked that out and I'll show you that here in a little bit when, we, when I talk about plans. Um, but then the other one was Shine On Sampler. So for the most part, the the items that I chose for my um, WIPGO board are pretty general, like words or stitching with the housewives, like a designer, or um, let's see, what else? Flowers was another, Christmas, holiday, animal. I tried to keep it pretty generic so that when that number got called, I would have a little bit of choice and it would be fun to kind of go through what my options were and pick. Um, but there were a couple of projects and Shine On Sampler was one of the few ones. So um, I'm, I'm ex I was excited that it got called. I was happy to start start working on it. So um, so this, um, I, I think I said, 
is a design by, um, well, the book is by Bonnie Ovalson and Camille Ross Kelly. And they were designers for, um, for Motive Fabrics um, and Bonnie and Camille Fabrics. Bonnie's retired and Camille is designing fabric on her own now and uh, I have a couple of little mini quilts that I've made with um, Camille's patterns in just a little bit I'll show you that so so far whip goes going really well um, the only one that got me stumped was I think in January when I was working on um, some Lori Holt vintage Christmas um, ornaments so I'll get back to that, but so far so good. Um, but yes, and I'll show you the ornament that I'm going to work on here in a little bit. Okay, so I've showed you the finish. We've looked at um, the whips that I've had going, and let's see. I think yeah. The other thing that I was going to show you was some haul. Now I actually haven't purchased anything since I talked to you last, but I forgot to show you a couple of things and then on another shelf I was like, oh goodness, I forgot that was down there. So I just have a couple other couple other things to show you. So um, last time I told you that I had visited the attic and um, then I visited Modern Quilting and both are in, Fe in the Phoenix area. And I don't think um, I showed you this so I really love um, Quilty Love. Emily Dennis owns Quilty Love, and she makes the most stunning patterns, and they're very scrap friendly, which I love scrappy quilts. And um, so anyway, this was one that they had that I don't have the pattern for, and so it's called Happy Stripes. And this one, this picture. I mean, it's pretty good. It shows you, you know, some of the colors and that it's built with strips and there's some triangle pieces there. But on the back is kind of a better, let's see if I can read it. Good. <laughs> Let's see what I'm looking at here. Maybe it's a little fuzzy, but it might show you the pattern a little bit better. So anyway, I think this one will make a good stash buster pattern to work on sometime. And then a couple of cross stitch patterns that I've had, I've, um, I downloaded them as PDFs. They're from Stitchy Princess on, um, on Etsy. She's a Ukrainian um, cross stitch designer and she does a lot of woodland um, creatures and um, I love that. So I'll show you a couple of them that I picked up here and there. This one is called Forest Foxes and um, it's stitchyprincess.etsy.com and then on Instagram she's stitchy space princess space black. So you can see her information here. And I'll try and zoom in a little bit so you can see that design. They look so, I don't know, kind of like lacy and elegant but yet even though it's kind of a delicate design, um, I love the woodland creatures. So there's one. And then this one is called Woodland Christmas. And I thought this one was kind of different with the, um, the dark background. It's called Rabbit's House. And I don't think I've shown these before. And I might have a couple other ones that I bought um, and just downloaded on Goodreads, or not Goodreads, GoodNotes on that app um, and haven't printed off yet. I'm not sure, but those were on the shelf and I don't think I've shared those yet. So now I think I've mentioned before that when you order from uh, Stitch On in um, Kansas, they have, you know, the Facebook Live twice a week. And when you um, order from them, a lot of times they will include um, a little gift, a little surprise. And they also pay for half of the shipping when you order from products from your Facebook Live. So um, I have gotten all kinds of fun things from them. Uh, sometimes needles, sometimes um, 
gosh, I've gotten like little things that you can put on your finger that are silicone so that when you're working with um, fussy things that you're ironing or you're working even with a glue gun, you can put those on your fingers to keep them from burning. Um, what else have I gotten? Um, I'll, I, I can't even think off the top of my head, but um, they have occasionally sent um, a charm pack, a mini charm pack. So this is one I've gotten before, um, I gotten recently. It's Flower Power. It's a Moda mini charm pack. There's 42 squares in here, and it's by Maureen McCormick. It, you might remember her from the from the Brady Bunch. Um, so she's designing fabric now. My mom also sent me um, a charm pack of of the same a same mini charm pack. So. I've got two and that ought to be fun to do something with. So I think I've gotten an Allison Glass uh, mini charm pack from Stitch On before. Let's see. I think those are in a different drawer, but um, it's always fun to see what surprise will be in there. So my mom sent me, sometimes she gets a little, she owns a quilt shop um, in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and every once in a while Moda will send her, um, you know, little goodies. And so sometimes if she knows that she's not gonna use them, she'll pass them on to my sister, my sister-in-law or I. And um, this time I got this little treat from her. It's um, a Christmas Eve Moda mini charm pack. And it's a, it's a line by Layla Boutique. And let's see if I can show some of the, some of the fabrics in there. You can at least see some of the colors, very rich red and greens and grays. So um, that'll be fun to work with. And it came with a pattern um, called Giving Season. It's for a pillow and you can use the charm pack to make this, um, this little pillow. If you like working with little mini charms, um, you might check out Primrose Cottage. You're probably familiar with them because of their um, their cross stitch patterns. But they also they have an Etsy shop and they have quilting and cross stitch um, fabrics and patterns. And Lindsay usually designs once a month a small um, pattern that. Um, you know a small quilting project and if you subscribe to her newsletter they send that out um, I think let's see is this the first Friday I think it's the first first or second Friday of the month um, a free um, small quilt pattern and so I noticed the last one that she sent um, I think I printed it out either this morning or yesterday um, called for a charm pattern our little mini charm pack. So if you have some of these that you've collected and you're not sure what to do with them, um, the pattern that she sent out today is a great, a great pattern for that. Um, and then my mom every once in a while sticks a fat quarter in for my, for my daughter. And so she got this little kitty cat. We have a cat named Mittens that looks kind of like this cat right here. And so um, every once in a while, my mom will stick a fat quarter in for my daughter. And then we were making Halloween treat bags for um, some kids up in Durango that um, the, quilt, the quilt shop there called Stitch um, called on the community to make um, trick or treat bags for kids that I think maybe they were kids that were in maybe a homeless shelter there. And they filled the bag with, um, you know, treats, toys, candy, a gift card from Maria's bookstore, and um, I don't know some other goodies. And so we contributed. You could contribute money to purchase things to go in the bag, um, or you could make bags or both. So we did that. And my daughter thought that she wanted to make a bag, and it, she actually ran out of time, so I made hers and mine, but this was one of the fabrics that she picked out, and it's glowing, glow-in-the-dark fabric. So um, I thought it was really cute. Um, so I don't know what she'll do with it now. She'll make one for next year, 
um, but it was really cute. And then they also, Stitch had, um, had this. I actually made um, an advent calendar that they had, um, they had, it wasn't a kit, but they had the panel. Um, and I used this fabric, I think I used this fabric on the back of it, but it was this line that the, um, that the panel for the advent calendar was, um, you know, part of this fabric line. So I thought those pink ones were pretty adorable. So I, I miss showing that advent calendar to you because it was hanging up and, um, so I'll have to pull it out this year and, and show it to you. It was, it was pretty fun. My part of my advent calendar was, um, hot teas from Plum Deluxe. They had an advent calendar this year and it was just perfect because there was enough tea, you know, for the, my little family of three to have, um, a different tea every night. We didn't end up drinking them all. So we, we still have them and are, are enjoying them, but it was fun to see all the different flavors and, and try them together. So this is um, a pattern I picked up at Stitch. They have a model that's next to their register um, that they've had there for, you know, a few years. And I've really admired it. And I think you can use, you know, any fabrics and it can be really scrappy, but it's called Dresden Neighborhood and it's by Persimmon Dreams. And um, I've admired that for quite a while. So they finally got it back in stock and I picked that up. Thought it'd be pretty fun. Um, this is one that I think I ordered. Yeah, I ordered this from Stitch On. It's a really inexpensive pattern. It was $3.50. But you can take, um, is it two pieces of fabric? It says that you need a main print, an inner border and binding, and an outer border. So probably three different fabrics. And it's really super quick to put together. So I thought that would make a good um, quick little runner. It says it's 12 and a half by 40. Um, great for, for novelty prints. So you could put um, a novelty print, um, you know, for a holiday or just for kind of seasonal in there and just kind of a quick finish. I think it'd make a great little gift. Even um, like if you have a new neighbor that, um, you know, moves in, um, it would be fun to do like a little seasonal one. You know, you wouldn't have to invest a ton of time into it. So... And then I think I told you last time that I'm always on the hunt for um, some low volume fabric. So this was one that I picked up from Stitch up in Durango. And I like the, I like the colorful print in this one. And then I thought this one was a nice um, kind of quiet background. So I don't, I don't think I've shown those to you, but I feel like I can put them away now. I'm sorry if I've uh, showed you those, any of those before, but um, I didn't re I didn't remember doing that. So, um, so I was going to tell you last um, last video. I showed you the little zip pouch that I had that I was keeping some of my notions in to take with my on the go cross stitch bag. And I had said something about um, my readers in there were causing that zip pouch to be kind of lumpy because really it was meant to be more of a wallet and more flat things in it. So as I was packing up for last weekend's uh, trip, I was searching in my cabinet for through all my little zip pouches and, and bags and things. And I came across this one. This is one my mom gave me and I think it must have come from her, it, it maybe came with um, her sewing machine. I'm not sure exactly what it was for or if it was maybe just a promotional bag or, or what, but um, I noticed that it was kind of boxed a little bit. It had, you know, some room down here and I was like, that might be just enough room. So I tried it out and it was perfect. So I'll, the thing I love about this round top bag is that you can really open it up wide and see what's in it. So I have in it um, the little tin that I use as an Oort container when I'm traveling. And then I also had in it this little container. 
that has a sponge and some water to run my thread over if my thread is really wavy or staticky. Um, and that fits nicely. I have my scissors in here and a couple of packages of needles. And then, oh, yep. I took this needle minder. It's one that I found maybe at, I don't know, Hobby Lobby, Joann's, Michael's, one of those places. So, and it's not, it's really cute, but it's not one that I'm gonna worry about if I lose. It's not a top favorite. Um, and then my readers fit in there really nicely. So it was just a great bag. And I got so excited about it that um, I started looking around to see, gosh, do I have, I was thinking, I bet I have another round top bag. And I have one that I have a cross stitch project in. It's this one. Oh yeah, my Cardinal Millifill kit is in this one. And my mom made me this bag. I know it came from my mom anyway. And so it's it's got that round, kind of rounded top. It's a little bigger. But, you know, they open up a little wider so you can see inside very nicely. So I texted my mom and I was like, Mom. And I sent her a picture. I was like, what is this bag pattern? I love the top of it. Because I was thinking I could make it a little bit shorter um, and box the corners on the bottom to give it that... Um, a little bit of a little bit of width and kind of make my own version of this and um, she did not remember making it and um, it's possible one of her one of the gals that uh, works at her shop may have made it um, for her and and she passed it on but I'm pretty sure she made this and so we both started digging and looking for patterns online to see um, what it could be. So the one that I kept coming up coming across was uh, a dumpling bag. And I can't even remember who it's by because I was like doing it in a hurry as we were getting ready to leave. Um, but I'm going to have to dig a little bit more to see if I can find one that's more the size because I think this would be really fun to make in, you know, my own choice of fabric. Um, but I will say it's a very durable, like it's a nice canvasy bag. So anyway, um, that's that. And I'll be on, I'll be on the lookout for, for one. So, okay, I'm going to share with you, um, I think next I'll show you a couple of um, the Camille Ross Kelly mini quilts that I've made. And then I'll share some of the projects that I'm going to work on uh, during my little DIY retreat this weekend. So um, let me grab those. I've got quite the piles going on here. So the first one I've had, oops, the first one I've had hanging, let's see, right there. And I took it down. I usually just hang these up with some toothpicks, not toothpicks. <laughs> That would not be very effective. Uh, thumbtacks. That's what I mean. Thumbtacks. So this is the first one that I wanted to show you. And it's probably my favorite. It's made with um, Camille Ross Kelly and Bonnie Olson's um, Bonnie and Camille Fabrics by Moda. Um, I'm trying to think of which line this is. Um, it's the one that I think it might be Vintage Picnic. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. And they fussy cut those little birds on it. Um, the name of this pattern is called Mini Piccadilly Circus. And the thing that I loved about this one, you use a charm pack to make this. And some of the scraps I used for the binding to make a scrappy binding. And then on the back, um, it's got some sailboats. And then I just did some echo quilting. I did um, circles around this way, all the way up to about like right here, to those points. And then I just kind of followed the line of these points and then, you know, fall, echoed that out um, from there. So, love this. 
loved making it. I made it at one of the stitch on retreats. So, or at least I quilted it there. So that's that one. And then this is one that was a kit that I purchased from uh, Stitch On. And this one is called Mini Spools. And I just used the fabric that was in the, the kit that Stitch On put together. So I like that it's so colorful. And then the spools and the binding is just kind of a nice neutral fabric. I would love to make this one again, actually, in the Bonnie and Camille or Camille fabrics. Um, I think I think it would look good no matter what fabrics that you choose. And I've seen so many different ways to do this one. Um, she has a bigger pattern that's a big quilt pattern. Um, but I've seen people um, choose, like, all one piece of fabric here. I've seen them choose all the same color for those three strips. Um, so you, I mean, there's so many, so many ways to do it and you can use a line of fabric or you could make it really scrappy from your stash or your scraps. So I think it's a pretty versatile pattern. So those are the only ones that I've made so far, but I have a couple of patterns and have a couple of kits. Um, this one is, um, vintage holiday mini. And you can also make ornaments from the pattern, the block patterns in here. So it's one of her minis. And um, I picked up this, I kitted this up when my daughter and I were on a trip to Tennessee to see my family. And we were driving between Kansas City and, um, and Tennessee. And I think we stopped in St. Louis at a little, a, well, it wasn't a little shop. It was a pretty good size shop in St. Louis and I don't even remember the name of it um, or if it's still around but I kitted that up there so I have the vintage holiday fabric and then you needed some other pieces so I have these little trees I'm not sure why I pulled this silver I think I pulled that out because it's um, it's gonna be the little top the little metal piece of the ornament. I don't know why I pulled that out of the charm pack, but um, a little silver metallic dot and some kind of aqua colored dots. I think this is for the binding. And I think these ornaments are for the, for the back. So, so cute. I love her colors. She's really started um, to experiment with um, designing with some other colors besides kind of the red, blue, aqua, navies, and um, it, it's kind of neat to see what she's, the colors that she's pulled together. Um, I know, let's see, I can't remember the name of her, the line that's out in stores right now, um, but they're beautiful. And um, she, I think she's had uh, Dwell and Nantucket that have been more of the blues. I just I just love everything that she does so um, then I have two pads she has a ton of patterns I looked on her website today called thimble blossoms and that's where her store is where you can find these patterns I think she sells printed patterns and PDFs if I remember right I could be wrong on that but I think so I was looking up the name of this and I noticed that she has like six pages of mini mini patterns um, or mini quilts so I just have a couple so here's uh, puddle jumping and I have always loved this block and you need I think fat eights for this one or scraps and then um, she's most known I think for her swoon patterns she's got a couple of different big quilt variations on swoon and so this is the mini um, Stitch On right now is having a quilt along with the swoon pattern. So um, this one takes fat eights also and some fat quarters. So anyway, I've always wanted to make a swoon. The very first time I saw it, I fell in love with it and but have not done it yet. So if you like little mini quilt patterns, you should go check out her website. There's a ton. Um, the reason why I like mini quilts 
is initially I thought, well, those aren't very functional. Necess oh, that's upside down. They're not necessarily very functional. I mean, you can't cover up and um, put this on your bed, but beyond just hanging them on your wall for decoration and adding something beautiful to your space, um, you can use them for table toppers. You could add a few together and make a runner. Um, I think they would, they make a great, um, like if you're cross stitching kind of, um, I guess a project mat is what you would call it, but a soft place to land your things. Um, a lot of times if you go on a retreat or like here in, um, my studio space, I have, um, you know, hard surfaces. And so I think they add, add some softness and a place to kind of contain your area a little bit if that's if that's a possible thing um but i and it, and the other thing is i feel like they make great kind of cleansers or projects to do in between bigger ones because you know after you've worked on such a um, a big quilt project it's really nice to have something that's easy and quick and satisfying and can be completed in a short amount of time. So those are great for that. And um, yeah, I think they're wonderful. So what I'm gonna be working on during um, my uh, little DIY retreat, um, right after lunch, I will kind of settle into it. Um, I'm gonna start out here, like I said, um, so that I can have my sewing machine. I could take like my little featherweight or something over uh, to the camper and, um, you know, do that from there. But I think this afternoon I'm going to sew with my sewing machine here and not drag all of that. Um, and um, I'm going to work on my bright little quilt. And I had started working on that. I think in January, um, this is the pattern for it. And then um, I took a pause as I was recovering from that um, heel procedure. And also I wanted to go ahead and finish um, that day hike quilt that I showed you last time. So I didn't finish the quilt, but I finished putting the blocks together. The top's finished. And um, now these blocks are sitting on my cutting table and I feel like today would be a perfect time to kind of, okay, where was I? Where are my pieces? I mean, I know all my pieces are on the table, but what goes together and um, what are my next steps and kind of get that started again so that next week when I have some, uh, some time I can, you know, have 10 minutes a half an hour, whatever, here and there to, um, you know, keep making progress on that. But I, you know, when you come back to something after a while, you kind of need to figure out where you're at. So that's the, that's first on my agenda to today. And then, um, that's probably the only quilting thing that I will work on unless I pull some, you know, some hand project out. Um, but I do have some cross stitch things that I'm going to work on. So I haven't picked up berry patch. Um, in a little while and I've been asking myself the last couple days okay why am I not picking this up because I, I love it it's so cute and I think it's because um, I want to figure out this flower color that I want to change and it's a little bit smaller fabric I feel like I need to concentrate on it there's some there's some decisions that need to be made um, and so I think this weekend will be a perfect time to to work on that and kind of get get some flow going again with this one. So I'm going to work on that for sure. I'm going to work on my um, Stronger Together for sure. And that's this one. And then I'm going to do a new start. Now, having a new start feels a little indulgent. Um, but I feel like when you start something new for me at least it takes a little a little concentration 
Um, it's not something I can, I feel like I can do, you know, sitting in front of the television in the evening um, and visiting with my family. So I need a little quiet time because when you start a new project, you've got to figure out where you want to start it. You've got to be very careful, get it, you know, to get it started in the right place and count and figure out your strategy for it. Get all your, make sure all your threads are together and all that. So here's my project bag. You guys have probably seen this before. It's made with some, um, oh gosh, the, the name will come to me in a second. Poppy cotton. Yeah, it's made with poppy cotton fabrics. And I, I made this bag using Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch, um, her tutorial for project bag. So inside I have Lori Holt's flea market flowers, and I've had this kitted up for I think a year and a half. I think we're in June, no July. In in July it'll be two years. So it is definitely time to start this. The thing that I've heard from people that have stitched this or have started stitching it is that it takes a lot more time to finish than they had anticipated. And so, you know, I might as well get started on it, right? So um, I'm sure that I will probably start with this one, um, but we shall see. So I have all of my threads, they're DMCs, and um, I have some... 25 count Lugana that I picked up at Stitch On. They helped me kit this up when I went to go visit um, a couple years ago. So um, 25 count Lugana in white. And then um, I have all of the DMCs ready to go right there. And you know what? One of the free gifts that I got from them I think, or maybe I ordered it, was some Lori Holt thread drops. They were kind of the egg shape, uh, the floss drops. And so I think I may um, use those to kit this up, you know, to get my, my thread drops ready. Um, so those three things for sure I'll be cross-stitching, but I'm just going to take a tote full of some of my projects and... Um, We'll see what all I work on. Oh, I have one more. So my other whip go is an ornament. And um, I, I didn't look up the name, I'm sorry, but um, somebody in one of my my recent videos, I think my whip parade video, um, mentioned that when you stitch Mill Hill, and they have the beads included, that you're supposed to stitch all of the regular, the thread, all the regular stitches first, and then do the beading. And I was like, oh. And I hadn't touched this in a while, so I was like, hmm, I need to take a look at that again. So this is the one that I'm gonna work on. It's um, one of their winter holiday um, little kits, and it's called Gingerbread Cottage. I feel like I'm holding this in just a certain section because on my phone, I've broken my screen. I've got a bright white stripe that's across the bottom that's about, about that far. So I have to go figure out how to uh, get my screen replaced. So I think I'm uh, just showing things in the part that I can see. <laughs> so let me show you um, kind of how far I've gone with this. So I have the door already. I've got dangling threads. If you watched Sarah's Stitchy Spot, she talks about her dangling threads. <laughs> so um, I've got the door and I've already got some beads on there, like right there, and then the white around there, those are beads. Um, so anyway, I when I was pulling this out to look at it, I was like, well, I have my directions right here. Let's just see what my kind viewer had said to go look at the directions. So, you know, and it even says somewhere on here, right here, like most recipes and patterns, please read all the instructions before beginning this project. Stitch from the chart, not the cover picture. There may be a slight variation. So I think I was most concerned about the, um, 
yet again, I think I accidentally showed the pattern here uh, on the other side, sorry. Hopefully it was brief and quick um, and you didn't, you know. Oh, please don't report me to the cross-stitch police. <laughs> I didn't mean to. We'll see if I can snip it out. But anyway, I was concerned about the beading the most because I hadn't beaded before. And so I read the directions and I highlighted that seed beads are attached with a half cross stitch and petite seed beads are attached with a cross stitch. Beads are generally stitched in place of cross stitches, not over them. So I knew that. Um, but I didn't go over here and read the special instructions um, over on this side that says to um, basically do your stitching first and then do the beading. So I will be doing that. And thank you. You know what? When you guys comment and give me little tips and um, uh, answer my questions and suggestions, I love it because I think that's what this is all about, right? It's sharing ideas and um, I just I just love it. So thank you. I do have a little tray. I think it might be here, yes, in this drawer that I'm gonna use for the first time. It is called a, oh, I wanna call it, I wanna say it's called like a stitching bob or something like that. But it's basically like a little CD case and you open it up and you can lay your beads on this and um, it's sticky. So your beads won't roll around. Somebody commented, I think maybe the same person, I'm not sure. Uh, it could have been a different person. I'll have to go back and look. But they said that you can use felt. So you can put felt down and that keeps your beads from like bouncing and rolling around so much. Um, so it provides a little bit of friction, which is, which is awesome. So those are great tips. And I feel confident that I could like try this and um, be successful with it um, using some of those tips. I can hear my beads rolling around in this little, yeah, in this little <laughs> container. So anyway, that'll be fun. Why do I have, ah, I've got a seam ripper in there. I must have, I must have needed uh, to seam rip. These are the best seam rippers, by the way. Um, this one is by Clover. Let's see if I can show it. Yep, it's by Clover. They're the best. Um, I love them. Okay. I think that I have probably talked quite enough, except there's one other thing. So I've mentioned before that I belong to the Kansas City Modern Quilt Guild. I kept... Um, my membership going because during uh you know all this illness that went around the last couple of years um so many things went virtual and they were able to do virtual meetings and that meant that even though i'd moved i could still participate which was amazing and they've continued that we do have a lot of people that um, have moved away from kansas city that have um you know continue to participate and uh, watch the meetings and then um, they also have a Facebook group that we can, you know, communicate and chat on. Um, so anyway, a few years ago, right before it was the year that I moved here to New Mexico, we did a book study together and um, it was, it was pretty awesome. And it's been enough years that have gone by that um, when it, a couple of the members said, Hey, why don't we do that again? And if anybody's interested, you know, comment here in our group under this post and we'll see if there's enough people to kind of get together and, and do it again. So you, I don't know if you're familiar with Julia Cameron, um, but she's written this book called The Artist's Way. It's been around quite a long time. Let's see when it was published. Ninety-two, so it's been around a while, and um, there are quite, I think maybe twelve chapters, quite a few. Cha maybe, well, week ten, I see week ten, and there's probably some like introduction. So I've started it again. The main things of um, Julia Cameron's book. Um, well, let me read a little bit here on the flap if you aren't familiar with 
with her work. Um, it says, The Artist's Way is the seminal book on the subject of creativity. An international bestseller, it has inspired millions to overcome the limiting beliefs and fears that can inhibit the creative process. Perhaps even more vital in today's cultural climate than when it was first published nearly two decades ago. So it was republished in 2002, if I, if I remember from just looking. Um, the Artist's Way is a powerfully provocative and inspiring work. In it, Julia Cameron takes readers on an amazing 12-week journey, so I was right, 12, um, to discover the inextricable link between their spiritual and creative selves. This groundbreaking program includes introductions to two of Cameron's most vital tools for creative recovery, the morning pages and the artist date, and then hundreds of highly effective exercises and activities. Guidance on starting a creative cluster of fellow artists who will support you in your creative endeavors. And it says a revolutionary program for artistic renewal from the world's foremost authority on the creative process. The Artist's Way is a life-changing book. And at the end of um, the chapters, she gives suggestions and ideas for um, like journaling and activities that you can do, kind of a check-in. Um, and so you don't necessarily do all of them. Um, she lists a lot of options. And she actually mentions that the ones that she said, maybe pick one that you seem super drawn to. And then one that you're like, whoa, no, no way um, to kind of stretch yourself a little bit. And um, so it's really easy to go back and uh, you reread the book because there's always for quite a while, there will be more options for you for activities to do. So morning pages are writing um, three longhand um, pages every morning. Um, and I have mine here. I usually just um, pick an inexpensive uh, composition notebook. This is kind of actually a fancy one that I got it back to school time. But you can get them on sale then. Um, you've probably seen the black and white composition books. Um, here's another one. Kind of fancy. But they're just cheap little notebooks. And I love journals. Um, I haven't written in this one yet, but um, I love journals, and it's fun to get, you know, some fancy ones, but I don't know. I feel like you have to have nice things and then nice fancy journals. So anyway, the guild, we've gotten together, and we're doing um, this. So I'm going to work on reading the first couple chapters. I think I've read the intro. I've read the first chapter. I haven't done any of the exercises, and I think I need to do the second chapter. So we need to kind of get caught up um, on this. So um, I will mention that when I first started quilting, my first quilting class that I took was in Eudora, just outside of Lawrence at Quilting Bits and Pieces. And the owner did my class and she was amazing and very kind. And she mentioned that I should come and visit her quilt guild there in Eudora. And I was like, the idea of a guild, to me, I thought of, um, you know, back in ancient history, you know, artists had guilds. I was thinking of like painters and sculptors and um, metal workers, um, metalsmiths, I think you call them. Anyway, to me, a guild would be for like professionals and I was just learning and she was like, oh no, you, you know, you don't have to be, you know, super experienced or anything. And I just had a hard time wrapping my mind around that. But she was completely right. We have um, so many people at, and I've been to, I've been to the guild in Eudora. I've been to the guild in Lawrence. I think I was a, me I was a member a couple of years when they have programs a lot of times if you come to see two programs then you might as well um, you might as well get a membership for the year and um, and then the Kansas City Modern Quilt Guild so I've been you know gone to several guilds and it is such a great community of people that are interested in the same thing that you are there are people that come to the guild that don't even quilt they just appreciate quilts and maybe they sew garments and they're interested in making a quilt sometime. Um, 
So, you know, most of the people have quilted something, but so many times um, people come and show their first quilt. Um, when I was a, a Kansas City Modern Quilt Guild um, member, which was so exciting. And all of us would like give them a standing ovation and a huge round of applause for accomplishing that first quilt. So if you have a quilt guild in your community and you haven't had the opportunity to go visit, I encourage you to because there is nothing better than, um, you know, sitting around a group of people that are passionate and love doing the same thing that you do. Um, you know, love the texture, the, you know, creating something and the same with cross stitch. I don't know that they have cross stitch guilds, but definitely cross stitch groups. We have, um, I know that our library is hosting, just recently started hosting a Wednesday group at two o'clock um, in the afternoon. And I can't always do that, but um, I do have some days that I could pop in. And then there's one on Saturday that I've been invited by two people to go visit. And I haven't done that yet, but I am going to. Um, just to be able to have some in-person, you know, exciting people that are excited about the same thing that you are. I know that um, if you have heard of the Facebook group Stitch or Stash 2023, um, I know Jessica um, from Sweetwater Stitcher, and I've just become familiar with um, Alicia. Alicia? Um, she's the fanciful flamingo. I've watched a couple of her floss tubes and I, I need to go and like watch some of the back, the older ones. Um, but they have a Facebook, Facebook group and I want to say that some of them, I think they have a kind of more formal one once a month where they invite a guest designer. Um, but then I've noticed some of the members are saying, Hey, I think I'm going to, um, Post a Zoom session tomorrow evening at this time. Come pop on, which is really fun. Um, and even though it's not in person, you still have that interaction. Um, so I don't know. I think it's really fun to connect with other creative people and to develop, to develop your own creativity, which is why I'm really excited to dig back into um, this book and um, just being part of floss tube and sharing comments on other people's videos and reading the ones that you guys um, post. It, it's just, it's all part of being a creative community, which is really fun. And thanks for being part of mine. So I hope that you have the opportunity to do something creative, um, whether it's quilting, cross stitch, drawing, knitting. So many creative people have um, several different interests um, that they enjoy. So I hope you get a chance this weekend to um, you know, do something that you love. So I'll report back soon about how my little you know, DIY retreat goes and maybe even share some tips that I've learned along the way. Um, about having a successful retreat. Um, I, being part of the guild in Kansas City, I got to help plan and host quite a few um, weekend retreats at a lot of different locations and some sewing days and things like that. So it's something that I love kind of planning and organizing and particip participating in. So anyway, you guys have a great weekend and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.